guys, uh, how awesome is that that we got it to pop off? So, it won't stay running, um, and I'm not surprised. We've got a few things that were uh, issues with it. Biggest one being that we found that the, uh, <laughs> that the, the, the body, the sniper body just wasn't even bolted down all the way, so obviously it had a massive vacuum leak. Um, besides that, uh, we've got three inches of exhaust past the oxygen sensor. It, this thing's a wide band. It's trying to like, it's, it's trying to read it and it's trying to decide how much fuel to pump in. And you know that thing's reading just a crazy amount of oxygen because the oxygen's going to get in between the pulses, so it's going to throw it way off. So that's a problem. Um, yeah, obviously, like no coolant in the system. You've got sensors that are reading oxygen temperature when they're trying to, where they're supposed to be reading water temperature. So yeah, another another big issue. Um, and then I think I just need to go back through the wizard. Um, the they, they call it the wizard. Um, basically, like reset all the parameters and dial everything in back again on the sniper. Or just give it a fresh start. Uh, and then just see what happens. And maybe we'll lock out and the thing will stay running for us. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's looking damn good. Um, it's awesome that the thing popped off despite all those those issues. Uh, biggest thing I just wanted to hear that it turn over nice and it actually started for us. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So um, here's what we're tackling now. Um, so we're gonna remedy those couple of issues. Those are the last things that we've got to take care of. We have um, one spark plug boot that is literally resting against the header, so we're gonna throw on one of these uh, boot protectors. Um, I hope that that's gonna take care of it. It's a little concerning that's literally touching it. Uh, if nothing else, I'll check with MSD and see if they make one, ones that have a bend on it. So it won't be as, quite as symmetrical. Uh, it won't look quite as perfect, but then again, you can't see that side very well. Um, so anyway, we're gonna be uh, tackling these couple of little things, I'll throw the belts on it, but the big things are I'm going to build some exhaust for it so at least it's dumping underneath the car in the back. So we've got more pipe, it's going to read the O2, the O2 readings a lot better. And um, we're going to finish up this coolant system, and once we do that, like, there's not a lot keeping this thing from driving besides us just getting all the suspension and steering adjusted finally, um, a couple like little things and tossing the seat in it. Uh, throttle. Uh, we got to put a throttle cable in it and a throttle pedal. That's another thing that we're going to toss together. Uh, I haven't done this yet, so this should be interesting, but it uh, should be relatively straightforward. So I'm going to tackle those couple little things right now um, so we can get this thing on the road and start testing it. All right, so uh, the radiator is rubbing on these these little lips down here. These little guys are actually kind of jagged. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start by just trying to hit them with a hammer and bend them back a little bit, because I don't mind if they're like kind of tight to the radiator, but I don't want them rubbing. So I'm gonna do that. Um, what's wild is this thing was already cut out. It makes me wonder if there was a, a small block in it at one point because you can see it's already notched funny. These normally have kind of a curve to them. Um, but that, I mean, that's not a problem because that's literally where the radiator has to go. So I would have had to do this anyways. It's just, I would have done a better job than that. Looks like it was to go with a torch or something, <laughs> but no problem. We're gonna, we'll, we'll swing a hammer and get those done. Game plan time. So, um, I've got the radiator just kind of situated. I think I got an idea of how I'm going to do this. Um, so there's a couple different brackets that I had picked up. Or rather, it's a bracket kit that came from Speedway. Um, and I 
I think what I'm going to end up doing, instead of like using these exactly like I think they're intended, because I believe that they're meant to sort of rest on the bottom and then clamp down on the top and then it holds it that way, sort of top and bottom. Um, I'm going to modify these guys so that they clamp the end tanks. So I'll shave these off um, so that they're not squishing down on the core. And I'll make it so that they just sort of clamp down on the sides, obviously with rubber in the middle of it and stuff. But um, And then they'll attach to the sides of the inner fenders here, which is kind of where the original radiator attached in the first place. That's kind of cool. Um, so we'll do it that way. We'll see how well it holds it. Um, if I've got concerns, I can always slot these things so that you can kind of push down a little bit more, you know, like I'll get it nice and, and snug so that it doesn't move. So uh, I got to push this thing back so I've got better room to work with for fabricating and pull the radiator out and kind of cover things a little. So let's, let's get into this thing. Check this out. So, the way it's gonna work, L bracket, L bracket, bang. It's gonna sandwich it. So we'll put some rubber pads in there so it doesn't obviously rub through, but it really shouldn't. Shouldn't really be a risk for doing that. But, just gotta compress these two and then mark. Mark where our drill. There we go. And the cool thing, it lines right up. It lines right up with where the holes are slotted on this thing already. So we'll, we'll base this one off this side as well. So now that I've spent more time than I should have on turning these little uh, little spacers, these bushings, I think we're ready to go. So I've got a 5 16th bolt, I've got the two brackets, and it's going to go like that. And that's what's going to space it out. So the brackets slide down on the side in the end tank. Let's go down with that. I'm going to use the factory holes that held the radiator support. 
there we go. And what this gives us, brackets will hold the radiator in place. And um, the base is what's going to keep it from moving too much. So it's all kind of supported in a bunch of different places. So I'll put a little bit of, uh, put a little piece of rubber or something in here. But for the most part, I think that's pretty damn supported. Okay, uh, radiator's looking great. It's mounted in there, pretty confident in the way it's sitting. So uh, I'm on to the point now to talk about the hoses. Um, now, what we got is a LS motor with a small block Chevy radiator. So anybody who's ever played around with a vehicle that already came with a small block and you're putting in, excuse me, a Gen 2 small block and you're putting in the, the Gen 3 or Gen 4, uh, you know that the LSs have smaller uh, coolant inlet and outlets. Uh, we've got a one and a quarter upper and a one and a half lower. And then on the small block radiator, you've got one and a half upper, one and three quarter lower. So you've got to adapt this thing. A couple brands make some adapters out there. Um, so that's not terrible if you've got the space that, that works. In my case, it's actually pretty tight in there. I mean, I've, I don't have a ton of space between their accessories um, and especially on the outlet um, down beneath. That, that's really rough because the uh, small block Chevy radiator points up and the gooseneck points basically down right at it. It's three inches between the two of them. So what I've come up with, uh, I went down to O'Reilly's and I just wandered back in the hose area and did some measuring and I actually found a couple hoses that might work to adapt these pieces together. So I've got a Master Pro 22039. Um, that's a one and three quarter inlet here. And you can see that it tapers down almost immediately. I'm betting that it's one an inch and a half by right here because it's inch and a half over here. So I'm hoping that I can cut this thing off and I can make that transition on the lower. On the upper, it's a different can of worms. This crazy thing is the factory LS pickup, uh, at least for a 5.3 liter pickup upper radiator hose. So it attaches like this. Um, attaches the motor here, comes on over, boom, there you go. Nothing too complicated. The trouble is this assumes you have a lot more space between your radiator and your, uh, your engine. So I'm gonna have to still cut this one a little bit. Um, I've got this guy, which is a, uh, well, actually I'll go back. This part number for the Chevy truck is a Gates uh, 22436. So there you go. Um, that's got a really nice bend on it that takes that whole truck pointing off into left field, um, uh, the outlet on the top there, and it brings it back towards the radiator. Um, and then I've got uh, another Master Pro hose here, 20801. And this guy is an inch and a half here, and it's an inch and a quarter right here. So, kind of cool. Uh, there's, there's a few ways to make this work, I think. Because, obviously, this is meant for this engine, so the whole thing is an inch and a quarter. So, kind of rad. Um, I haven't tried to just force this on here, but something tells me it's it's not not gonna be too happy about it. Probably not. It you do run a risk by doing it that way too, forcing it on there, um, because then it stretches the hose out a bit, and you it might burst. So we'll see. I'm gonna try and see if it'll slip over there. It probably won't, um, but. Going to play around a little bit, um, see what we can figure out, and I'll show you guys which pieces I used. And if you want to try and do the same thing, if you're putting an LS in a, a shoebox, um, you'll know what to do.
All right, so I finally got this thing figured out. I had ordered up a, uh, it's a coupler that has a little adapter fitting in it as well. And these are slick for setting up your, um, your steam pipe connection. So why this is really important is on LS engines, they have uh, steam vent pipes that are on the very top, um, or basically on top of the valley cover. And uh, you need to plumb that back into your system. Uh, with the OEM setup, it's already got provisions for where that's gonna go. Um, but when you're doing it in an aftermarket application, retrofitting, um, you know, whatever you're using your LS for, uh, you gotta figure out a way to put it back into the system so that it'll allow that air to bleed out. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with uh, air pockets in the heads or uh, heater core or God knows what else. So, um, yeah, so what I picked up was this, this coupler piece, and I think that's gonna work pretty slick. So I'm putting that in my upper radiator hose. Uh, there are a few other ways that you can do this. You'll wanna do your own research. Um, I believe you can tap the water pump housing. Um, some radiators, I think, actually have it built in, uh, but you know, in, in my case, this worked out just fine. I had to adapt these two hoses anyway, so this made it that much easier. Uh, locating one of these was tricky, um, and this might have just been you know, my mistake, but uh, I found that trying to order these things, some manufacturers, when they tell you what size it is, they go off of the hose size, and I've, I'm not even kidding, off of the outer diameter hose size. So I had ordered one up and it was about a one inch barb when it said it was for a one and a quarter. Well, what it meant was it's for a one and a quarter outer diameter radiator hose. Um, ridiculous. Uh, it, maybe that's how other manufacturers do it too, but uh, I found that to be kind of crazy. So anyway, um, I made a point to order up one that specifically measured the, the size of, um, the outer diameter size of, of this guy. Um, and it's a 34 millimeter and that fits really good. So I'll put a link in the description in case you're in the same situation. But this is gonna go into the upper radiator and this portion is pointing back towards the hose itself that runs to the engine. So that way I can have the uh, quarter inch line will just kind of follow that as well. So toss this guy in. So it's running great for a moment. That's so weird. That's like a timing issue.
weird not to put a seatbelt on.
Hey, thanks for tuning in. It's been two years of building this thing. Um, we've gotten so much love from you guys, and uh, I don't know, it's been awesome. So, you know, thank you. And we hope you enjoy the highlight reel. That's going to be the next video that that's, can be found up in here. <laughs> so, we'll see you guys at the next one.